How's it going? And welcome back to another episode of the Geek Era Podcast. And with me, we have special guests. Want to introduce yourself, Matt? Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, my name is Sal Desayan, and I'm really happy to be here. Cool. And uh, we have, uh, you know, sort of a great discussion at the moment. Uh, so, uh, just, you know, one of the first things that sort of can, uh, has come up as Serial Experiments Lane is now open for all creators, has now become open source. Uh, Serial Experiment Lane was a very popular cyberpunk series back in 1999, uh, which a lot of the stuff that they kind of predicted kind of really came true. Uh, I don't know why it's become sort of open source, but I think it's really cool for content creators to do, you know, music or animations or learn the coding in it. What do you think about this, Sal? Yeah, I mean, it sound, it definitely sounds like, it, I think it's personally, personally, I think it sounds like a good idea. It's a good just because, you know, from what it seems like the the creators are just going to be getting a little more power as far as it goes. Yeah, you know well, I mean? it, 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 well, it, it would be, you know, very useful since the fact that, you know, you know, content creator using anime clips or anything like that, you're going to get co- copy strikes. At least this right. time around, because you know, and, and, yeah. The thing is, not the copyright. <laughs> yeah, the copyright situation in the anime community is really bad because some of these companies they just go and they'll just claim everything and anything that they think is theirs when, in reality, it's it's under fair use. And this really comes in play with some of the manga companies like Shueisha and a lot of Dragon Ball YouTubers I know had a big um big issue with that where their entire channels were being taken down really unjustly so you know it's good that you know some of these creators are going to be able to have a little more power oh yeah definitely uh you know it's nice that you know and the the, i think the copyright is for a good few years that's going to be open source uh i'm not sure if there is that much of a fandom you know most of the people that really got into serial experiments lane were you know uh 1999 geez i was still living in america at that time uh but there's always people that are going to come across that you know that series even nowadays uh it is considered a classic so uh, it'd be a good sort of branch for content creators especially in animated Right. Try to get involved in. Uh, the next up, uh, we have two bits of Akira news. So first of all, uh, to to everyone's delight, the remake of uh, the live action remake of Akira has been put on immediate hiatus. This was going to be set instead of Neo Tokyo. It's going to be set in Neo New York and produced by Leonardo DiCaprio. But it just seems to be getting so much production problems at this point. Uh, you know, it was going to be predicted as the next Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I hope the fans of Akira don't, you know, if, you know, I really think any live action anime is always going to be kind of tough. Like, you know, they really, Death Note, the live action Death Note was horrible in my opinion the live action full metal alchemist was horrible in my opinion and dragon ball evolution is just the bottom of everything you know that's the worst ever so yeah. you know maybe it's for the better um but you know if they're putting a big budget into it you never know like maybe they could have actually did it right yeah uh i know that it's one of those that anime adaptation has been one of those Akira, Cowboy Bebop, and Neon Genesis are the three things that keep trying to be readapted and then it goes through development hell for years. But this is they they announced that this project was gonna be worked on like three years ago and it's still being worked on at this point. Uh, right. You know, Cowboy Bebop was originally supposed to be starring Kenya, uh, Keanu Reeves as Spike Spiegel. Oh, I didn't even know that. That sounds awesome. But like, I think the cost is something like a billion dollars, and this is before oh, Avatar came out. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, that, that probably wouldn't even have turned out 
as big of a profit just because, you know, it is, it's not like, you know, in order to get, to make a profit on that, you're going to need to make over a billion dollars. And for that, you need, you know, a big brand name, like, like a Star Wars or a Marvel movie, you know, something like that. Yeah. Like, need to know, Akira is probably one of the most uh, critically acclaimed animated films of, you know, just even films of all time, really, out of Japan. Right. You know, it's after celebrating a 30th anniversary last year. Uh, it was, I think it's, to be honest, it, it, you would have to have a budget of a limited amount of money, really, to try to get the amount of details that are in that i think it's just too heavy the dense of a of a story really to get a live action adaptation right and it's really hard when it comes to live action adaptations like like to really capture the same emotion that you can through animation if you even look at um the most recent example um which would be the lion king like there's certain scenes that like the original uh movie the the animation that has it has such emotion and the live action version just can't capture the same thing because it's not animation they actually did a great job with it but it's just impossible to capture those same emotions through live action versus you know animation yeah like uh well you know some fan creators have been able to you know do some fantastic recreation work. Uh, there is the most famous example would actually be the Akira Rising project where they did the bike scene from uh, the original bike chase scene from Akira, and it's really well done. Trying to keep that animation, uh, that same quality throughout the whole film. Could you imagine uh, the final scene in Akira where he becomes this gelatinous blob that consumes everyone? Right, the budget would be probably crazy and it would take a yeah, lot of time to, to do it. It would have to be sort of, you know, PG down because you do see, you know, his girlfriend being crushed to death. Right. So I don't think it it worked out, you know, properly. Uh, you know, uh, as far as that, you know, I, you know, we're kind of glad that it's kind of good. But we do have uh, a, another Akira production being worked out where it's basically uh they're going to be covering uh past the the original film into the and finish off the the anime but uh what, what do you think about this yourself well I, I mean obviously i think it's good because you know when you have unfinished material you know it does kind of leave you wanting more and for fans of akira to be able to you know get more i guess that has to be you know make them happy but you know hopefully they do it the right way and they don't screw anything up uh and keep it up with the same quality as akira and that way they can be happy you know oh yeah uh you know I, i'm just hoping that you know the, they have the the creator of akira on board just like you know he, he was the original director of the the film itself right so uh, that that's my sort of only concern. Uh, I'm still looking forward to it. I think it'd be a great way, especially for the you know the younger generations that you know, you know, are averted to you know don't want to see you know that Kira film coming. You know, oh, I don't want to see a film that came out in 1988. I right. want to see something new and current. You know, introduce could, the new yeah, generation. and maybe not time. just new generations, but it can just introduce maybe people who never got around to seeing it. And, making them have more of an incentive. Yeah, that's, that's definitely true. Uh, so, like, uh, the sort of the final news piece is kind of a goofy one at the moment. Uh, thousands of people are flocking to Area 51 in a Naruto-style uh, running style, trying yeah. to swarm Area 51. I mean, I guess they want to see the millions, you know. That's that's, that's what so they say. Are, are you are you saying they really want to believe it? I'm okay. I don't think that they actually. I think they're just. I don't think anybody's actually going. I think like maybe no, there's a whole like, amount of celebrities that are involved in this as well. Like, 
It's right. either the think... dumbest publicity ever or, you know, I think people have dropped an intelligence at this point. Right. I think, honestly, it's just a big joke, like, at this point. And it's just, you know, I saw another um, movement that they're trying to say is they want to storm the Bermuda Triangle. So it's like, and that has, I think, a couple of hundred thousand signatures or, or something or people wanting to go to that. So there's just a lot of things like that. Um, but it's just kind of funny let's how... Let's be honest here. So they want to go to, you know, Area 51 and they're going to the Bermuda Triangle. They just want a holiday. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, it sounds like that to me. But also at the same time, I hope nobody actually goes to Area 51 and tries to storm because... I, people are gonna die, you know. Like the that's like a I that's a think, military base. But that, that's that's the thing, though. They don't actually know where Area Fifty One is. That's kind of the part of the point as well. Oh, I thought they knew where it was. That nobody just knows what's in it because it's like a building. It's probably gonna be like an empty warehouse. You you realize creating a Facebook event is probably not the great greatest indicator of oh well the. They're waiting for this event to happen. We could just move all the stuff to another place. Right. I, I think it just started out as a joke and then kind of escalated from there. Um, I yeah, just, it's kind of I mean, like, uh, I think w- one of the big sort of joke events we had here in, uh, here in Dublin and Ireland was like the biggest game of hide and seek in an Ikea. Right. So I uh, know uh, the fact that one, it's newsworthy, and the fact that there's so many celebrities that are like all on this get invade Area 51 thing is just absolutely ridiculous. Right. You know, there's, don't I call mean, Steve Austin. <laughs> right. I mean, there's honestly, there's over I think 1.5 or 1.6 million people that like said that they were going. I mean, obviously, the vast majority of those people aren't actually going, and they're just joking about it. But yeah, I'm wondering whether you know doing the Naruto pose to try to get into Area 51. So that's just gonna be so funny. Where the hell did that come from? Yeah, you gotta think no matter what happens, there's just gonna be memes about it. Like, no matter what the outcome is, if people don't go, there's gonna be memes about it. If people go and nothing happens, then there's gonna be memes about it. If people go and there's like a massacre, then there's gonna be memes about it too <laughs> so, you know yeah. it is what it is at this point we're just going to get memes from it you know I, I have a feeling that it's probably going to be like a few hundred instead of a few thousand really right maybe like you know, a couple hundred people will actually go yeah and that's probably the and same people that try to break into area 51 on like a weekly basis right and they're probably just going to like like, like the military is just going to be like, all right, if you step forward, we're going to blast you. And they're just like, all right, we're not. We're going home. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so that, that sort of brings us to uh, our main topic uh, that actually Sal, as mentioned before, is the, the state of the, the Dragon Ball community at the moment. Right. And, um, you know, as far, even as far as, you know, it, it kind of extends even far to the, the anime community. Uh, you know, what what's causing the divide between people and, you know, how can we fix everything? Right. Well, I mean, for the Dragon Ball community in general, like, uh, from what I've noticed, because I've been a part of the Dragon Ball community for quite some time. Um, I mean, not too long. Uh, but most some people have been there since like the 90s and early 2000s. Uh, I certainly haven't been around that long, but from what I've seen is I've seen an evolution um, recently. Like there, like from I would say 2015 to 2017, there was a change in the culture, and there has been, and it's, and this is throughout the entire I think anime fandom in general, where there has been more of a tolerance and acceptance towards people who watch the Japanese versions, um, and this especially goes for Dragon Ball because you know in america so many people are like they hate the japanese version because they grew up with the english dub which you know it's it's a shame because the english dub is just extremely inaccurate um the voice actors themselves admit that they were rookies and they were not very good um and the only reason people really enjoy that is because of their nostalgia 
where you know you have Dragon Ball Kai, which is just a better dub and all that stuff, and people hate Dragon Ball Kai and they hate the Japanese version. Um, and it's a shame because those are, I mean, in my opinion, better quality. Um, and the voice actors will tell you that as well. So, you know, I saw in 2015, um, 2016, you know, just kind of a change in culture um, where people in, across the anime fandom where there was this kind of hostility towards subs. Um, and now there's more of a acceptance. Um, but then in like 2018, there's kind of like this like backlash against that where people are like now starting to go the other way where they're like, Oh no, the, this is stupid, like watch the dub. And, you know, I think now it's kind of like calmed down a little bit, but there's, you know, that's always going to be an issue, the whole sub versus dub thing. But then other issues are just people getting bored with themselves. Like right now in the Dragon Ball community, we have, you know, we're waiting for Dragon Ball Super to be announced, to be returned, to return um and there's really nothing going on so people are just finding things to debate about and when that comes more hostility more arguing and it's just overall not the best time to be in the dragon ball community just because of the hostility right now um and once dragon ball super gets announced to come back i think that'll all kind of change and it'll go back to how it was where everybody was kind of united to enjoy the show that they all loved so yeah, that's kind of my little spiel on that. Uh, but let me know what you think about that. Um, you know, I've been a content creator in the the anime community for geez, a good number of years now. At this point, just you know, podcasting and interviewing people. Uh, and I don't, there there seems to be sort of a, a one upmanship. What seems to be the biggest issue with you know, especially when it comes to sort of content creators. Uh, and yeah, you are right, you know, at this point, you know, everyone is trying to find things to sort of bicker over whether it's, you know, dub versus sub or which sub is the, the most accurate at this point, or, I, you know, I hate to say it at this point, I think the, bi- the biggest issue now is, you know, uh, the anime community has become very political because of this whole Vic Mignogna thing. Right, that's the worst. Because... You know, and it, and it actually really doesn't matter at the end of the day. Like, alright, it's gone to court now. Can we actually just move on? No. We're, we're going right. to argue at every single bit of information we find out now. Right, and it's such a shame because I mean, right now I think the vast majority of fans that were involved with that have kind of backed out of it, but it was such a big issue, especially with Kamea Khan, and hopefully... I mean, Sayakon is going to be lucky because they're not going to have, you know, a big looming issue like this where content creators are dropping out because of a voice actor. And, Mm -hmm. you know, the big issue with um, that was, you know, you had people who were so like, there it was such a polar opposite. There was no middle ground. It was Vic Mignogna is Hitler or Vic Mignogna is Jesus. You know, <laughs> people are basically, they couldn't pick a side. Uh-huh. And there was no middle ground where people were able to just say, look, it's out of my hands. Um, you know, whatever, let them go to court and let them figure it out. I just wish for whatever, whatever the truth is, hopefully it comes out. And that's, yeah. you know, that's kind of how I was. And I know that's a lot of my friends, but I know the very, I know the majority was not like that. People were very loud. And it was a big issue with Kamehakan because Kamehakan, you know, you had voice actors pulling out, you had content creators pulling out. Um, it was a big issue. So people were very divided about it. And now it's kind of calmed down, but there still are people that oh, are very... Yeah. You know, the vo- voice actors themselves. And it is, I, I think it, it's something that I like to call the... Uh, What's the the best way to do it? There, there's certain personalities where they come off as friendly, but sometimes the people it comes off as fake. I mean, so I hate to like intrude with you guys, um, but basically, yeah, I'm sorry, I joined through like about a minute ago. Um, basically, I feel like um, what you were trying to say before, because I've been listening. <laughs> sorry, um, if you have I okay. Mm-hmm. 
All right, sorry. Um, basically, what I'm trying to say is that um, you know how you were talking about the whole controversy to do with like uh, what Comic-Con was and things like that? Um, I feel like there's a lot of false information about which regards to different people in general. And as you were saying with uh, content creators, there's a lot of stuff going around with that too. Right. Sorry, I'll shut up and go into the sidelines now. Oh yeah, um, I think the, the the biggest sort of example of that, and the, like some people are just there to you know spark anger, and I, I've seen that. And he, he's not even involved in the whole Vic situation. Is uh, the mad black atheist? Yeah. Who literally just trash talks, you know, the Dragon Ball community to try to get views of the anime community. <laughs> Right. I mean, that was uh, the that, same with Perfection, though, wasn't it? Well, Perfection was just trying to take down people that he was jealous of. Honestly, that that's yeah. really what it came down to. He was taking, he was going towards um, the whole Geekdom 101 and his whole friendship, like all of his friends, um, which clearly he, I mean, to me, it means that he wanted in that and he couldn't get in that because he just, you know, it, maybe it wasn't against him and he just not everybody's going to get attention like if you like i've seen a lot of people and this happens to me too now that you know i'm getting a bigger following now over time as a content creator yeah you know you're not able to reach every person mm. i, I like, totally understand pe- that right like, like when i can't yeah. when people tweet at me and they're like and i can't get back to them because there are days like today where i was in a twitter war or debating power scaling of Majin Buu. Um, <laughs> and I had about 200 notifications on Twitter. Maybe more. Yeah, you, uh, you had some very famous people way in in that argument. I've seen anime AJ getting involved. Oh, I didn't even know he got involved in that because I muted it after a while. <laughs> yeah, I, it was just because I, I had to get I had to get in the car to drive home, and I was like, I don't need my phone ringing every two seconds. So this is not worth a car accident. Yeah, so... Um... <laughs> Like, uh, what you were going down to with the, um, obviously, when you were talking about uh, the whole thing with, like, you as a content creator just growing and, like, having to talk. Um, I'm I'm not big, obviously, but um, I get the struggles of when you've got people messaging you on different bases, asking for different things. Because I've had a load of promotions through and things like that for different stuff, and it's like, you can't always accept them when right. it comes through with that. And a lot of people get angry with you because of it, but it's not meant. Like, right. you, you can't do it. Right, and there's just sometimes, like, you know, I've got people in my Discord server, um, Dragon Ball Network Discord server, that they want to debate me on different things, and they're like, why aren't you here? And if you don't, like, you know, if you don't respond, it's like, oh, you're ducking me. You know, I, I, yeah. I, I genuinely don't have time, because I'm not just a content creator. I'm a college student. I work a full-time job. I have a very active social life so you know yeah it's kinda understand tough. That. So, understand that. yeah and the thing is some of the dragon ball community is a lot of people who are younger and some of them might not have as much patience as some adults yeah um, and um, this is not obviously not generalizing the whole and community i know a lot of um like my like i'm, I'm not meaning to bring this on to me but it'll probably be with you too You'll notice that these people who are younger, like 12, 13, and things like that, that are messaging, you can't really message the back, obviously, number one, for legal reasons, and number two, uh, basically, you you don't know what that person's really after, if you get my gist. Right. Right. And some people, they, they want you to, like, say something bad to them. I that mean, I've had to... take the screenshot, get yeah. their clout. Hmm. I mean, I've had to private my Twitter um, to only select people to message me because I had, like, tons of messages through with it. Right. It's a, it's mm-hmm. a tough situation. Um, and this is especially in the Dragon Ball community where there are a lot of young people, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's really tough. Understandable. And then there are some people from, you know, different cultures that sometimes they come off as rude when they're really not <laughs> like, you know, and it's just kind of a, it's kind of like a language barrier and it's kind of tough to decipher through that. Um, so there's a lot of different aspects to the whole community uh, yeah. that are kind of tough to sort through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think the, the biggest sort of issue is uh, really 
you know, how to, you know, close the divide, you know, how to get people being sort of less toxic with each other type of thing. I mean, I hope when all these cases go through that there's nothing else that comes up because, to be honest with you, I hope that once this happens, like, fair enough, it can just be dropped on its side. These people who thought this happened, the other people who thought this happened, just come together as a community because, to be honest with you, this world really does need people to come together rather than fights, wars, everything else. I'm not an activist or anything, but... No, no, you, but you that goes just... that goes for everything. That goes for mm. not just Dragon Ball go, or anime. It goes for everything in life. Um, but I agree. I, I think the one thing that could save it um, right now, for at least the Dragon Ball community, is Dragon Ball Super coming back. Just because that's one thing that does unite fans. Yeah. Um, even if people that aren't too crazy about Dragon Ball Super, like like myself, I'm like I'm I'm somebody who views like Dragon Ball GT as a better written series, but yeah, at the same that, time, that is that is me. Yeah, honestly. but at the same time, I love Dragon Ball Super, and when it's uh-huh. when it's airing, I'm a happy camper, you know. So I yeah, I get you. I, me not it, so much it, in the UK. Right, <laughs> right. It gives me it gives me content to make. Uh, it gives me discussions to make, to talk to my friends about. Yeah. So it's more about that than it's more about the social aspect than mm-hmm. the actual series itself. Yeah. Because you know I'd rather watch other pieces of Dragon Ball than Dragon Ball. Yeah, Super. it's brilliant. Like, um, I think it's brilliant. Like when you make a video and then like you have someone who also makes a video on it, and then you coincide and just see what little tidbits they've got and little different things that's things that happen and like different opinions. Because it's always nice yeah. seeing someone else's opinion even if you don't like support it even if it is in a video it's good to see the way that they feel because all together like we're all coming together for this thing which is obviously dragon ball and i mean uh given different conventions and things like that we all meet we all talk we all are interviewed everything like that and i mean right it just brings everyone together and I wish that there was just some way that that could happen in the voice acting community, but it can't. Oh, I right. think it can. I, I I think, you know, things yeah. will eventually heal. It's going to take some time. Yeah, uh, I really after, do hope so. You know, after the court case, you know, it's gone through, uh, people have already sort of made up their minds. But, uh, you know, mm-hmm. time, time heals all wounds, really, at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a way for, you know, if Vic is uh, if Vic is innocent, uh, or even if he's guilty, at least we have a genuine answer. That and then, like, All right, yeah, we were wrong, or yeah. I feel we like, were... yeah, I feel like the thing is, is like I'm not insulting anyone here. Like they can have their own views, but no matter what it is, there's always going to be an outcome of whether this person wins and that person wins, and no one's really going to be happy with it. Right. The only way that you can actually get into that divide is by just having someone just say, look, it's over. There's no point in fighting anymore. You just can all do what you need to. Because I know that there's been tons of people who just either care about it, don't care about it, or just sick of hearing it. Because really, realistically, we shouldn't really be sticking our noses into other people's business, but we do. Right. Not like but at the same time, they publicized it, you know? Exactly. So I think, I think they wanted public support, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I get it entirely, but I don't get it where you just have to have a battle of wits with someone in order to win something. Because it's right. like, it's it's gone through everything. I mean, in general. I mean, you've got the things with cons, you've got the things with voice actors. There's always going to be something that's going to be there. But if there is some way that it could just end the whole argument in general, then it would be brilliant. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think uh, even afterwards, I think even, you know, the the voice actors, you know, the, you know, even they were kick Vic or for Vic or whatever it is, mm-hmm. uh, when the decision comes out, you know, they, you know, you know, take two days, cool off, don't go on Twitter for, you know, go, don't go on social media for like two days or something like that. And, you know, apologize to all the fans. Right. Yeah. It was just it's a like, big issue. We, we just want to move on. I was, you know, angry at the time. You know, I, I still, I still like you guys. 
and yeah. I hope you support me for my you know my projects in the future. You're always going to be trolls. You're, you're always going to be dealing with you know alt right people online, and they're yeah. always right. here to try to throw napalm on the fire. Mm-hmm. You, you need to try to you know get rid of it. I've had you know alt right accounts. I mean, we've had all right accounts, to be honest, even in mentioning me. So it's like, fair enough. Right. You do you. But no, at the end I, of the I day. I'm trying to delete them because they have like Nazis, Nazi symbols on their, you know, Twitter accounts. You just, yeah, I know. It's just. You move on. You don't advertise, hey, here's a Nazi account. Yeah, I get right. that entirely. Right. I mean, I, I think what people really need to do is, I first of all, I, I just. I personally, I just feel like that's their business and I feel like they should be able to handle it privately. So I don't really see why me giving my opinion should matter. Um, because I see people putting, you know, hashtag kick Vic, hashtag Vic kicks back in their Twitter profiles. I mean, I've, just... seen, I mean I've seen your stuff on Twitter. No offense, right. like, to you or anything. But it's just absolutely disgusting some of the things that people put to you just because you believe in something honestly right i've, I've seen it like i personally right. wanted to comment on it but i've never wanted to get involved but the whole thing right. is is that why threaten someone else for something that's really none of your business fair enough it was publicized to the public but if someone doesn't agree with you you don't threaten them right you just I agree you just look at the situation and you're like, fair enough, you believe in this, I believe in this. Let's just not talk. You don't like, I, I don't get this, why people just get so annoyed over certain situations. And I get it could be upbringing, I get it could be something else, but the thing is, is that once they're proven wrong, or once they're proven right, or whatever, no matter the situation, they're still going to feel guilty for what they've said to that person. Right. There's always going to be human guilt. Right. And, you know, you're right about that. And this just really goes not just for this situation. This goes for any type of situation. Like, this could be, like, even what I've been dealing with, with this whole power scaling debate. So, I, so uh, basically, I'll I'll give you a rundown of the debate. It was just, I'm on the side that believes that uh, Buhan, so Majin Buu with uh, Gohan absorbed, is the most powerful Majin Buu. Yeah, yes. Then because... there are those. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's my, you know, that's my opinion. That's how I interpret the events, and I think that he's, in I think Kid Boo is weaker than Super Boo, base Super Boo. Yeah, that's but if he I... is the, if he is the start, this this thing, like, even though he has God Key, th- this is what people don't seem to get right. So you've obviously got the whole thing with obviously Majin Boo, but when he absorbs Gohan. He already has God Key, it's even said in the manga. But he also has Gohan's God Key. From the Kai's. So if you think well, about that. The thing well the thing is, I, I mean, I don't think Gohan had God Key, um, when he was Ultimate Gohan. But the thing is, I think I was just trying I was keeping this debate strictly from the original manga. Like I'm not even talking I wasn't even considering yeah, okay. Dragon Ball Super in it. So the, there are people yeah. that are interpreting the events of Dragon Ball Z and yeah. the Dragon Ball manga as, you know, the way... Yeah, some people are just ignorant, though. I mean... Right. Uh... But they, they present good arguments, but they just interpret the events, in my yeah, opinion, it's... the wrong way. It's like, to and be honest I'm... with you, yeah. for our jobs in general, we need to know about this, because if we lie about it, then we're seen as bad. Right. So we have to get the accurate information out there. And I know sometimes that you'll just have that one person that'll be like, oh, well, I don't believe in your opinion, but you did all right with the facts and things like that. And it's like, yeah, well, you have to factually, like, correct a video and correct yourself on Twitter, too. I mean, right. it's this thing of where if you don't, then you get bad rep off it. Right. And the thing is, you know, I am i don't understand why I, I made a convincing argument. The guy made mm-hmm. a convincing argument, honestly. Um, yeah. But you just can't come to an agreement. You know? mm-hmm. It's like it's like you're putting each other's heads into a wall until one of your heads cracks. I know that sounds right. sick, but you know right. what I mean. It is. Yeah, and and I even had another debate um, with somebody in a in my Discord server, and they were saying that 
Krillin in Dragon Ball Super is equivalent to Super Saiyan Blue Goku. Yeah, um, I had that argument with uh, a friend before, like literally just before about that. <laughs> right, and he, he was he gave me like this this debate, and I my only refute to it was, you know, that's God just key. not how. Well, not God Key. It was. The only refute to the debate was because he was telling, you know, he was saying basically in the tournament of power, um, Krillin fights evenly with Android 18 against an opponent. And he's saying Android 18 is equal to Android 17 because they both took equal damage from a blast by a Dever character. And my refute to that was, well, don't you know that Android 17 was most likely holding back in that situation? There's no way Android 18 would be that powerful. Yeah. It's totally true but because he's saying prove on. that, how, but but it doesn't show that. You know, how do you know that he's holding back? And I can't. Yeah, like, well, prove uh, that. Krillin, even as far back as you know the original Dragon Ball series, has always been about trickery and using his you know brain to defeat an enemy more so than you know fighting and techniques type of thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and the thing is, you know, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. He, uh, I, I think he is the, the human with the most endurance because he is the one that, you know that's married to an android that has unlimited stamina. But that's a completely different issue. Right. It was the sad. It was the sad thing with like the same with Goku though. It's like um, someone was arguing, oh, Goku has all these like uh, things that he made himself, like Kamenha, um, the about well, another special beam cannon, but sort of flare. Kamehameha. That's what it says. It was Roshi and everything else. And I said the only true thing that he has is the power pole, and that's even still arguable. Right. He like, never made his own technique, uh, except exactly. for like, um, maybe combining Kaioken with Super Saiyan or something, you know? Yeah. Or but um, that's still not a technique. It's still a, well, it's not a transformation, right. but it's not a technique. It's right. An an evolve, maybe like an evolution, if you get what right. I mean. Right. You know, it, it's tough. Um, Unlock ability, like a video game. Right. I mean, to be honest with you, the only accurate thing that you can say about currently, about even if you were to talk about Ultra Instinct, is just Xenoverse, and there's nothing there. <laughs> well, I mean, there's, you know, the fact that, you know, with, uh, you know, in Dragon Ball, with the new, uh, pro- you know, Project Dragon Ball, uh, the fact that there's going to be side stories that, you know, are canon. It's going to sound good, like, that would probably answer some stuff, and it will be good when it finally does come out, but... My uh, my name thing I'd I'd like to have included is, uh, I want a backstory of TM. Mm. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. I mean, all we have... You know, from the uh, the God Tribes. I want to know what exactly happens in between King Piccolo Saga and uh, Ender Dragon Ball. That sounds weird. Uh, what happened? Well, all we know really is that Goku just trained with. I mean, because people are saying that it's starting with Dragon Ball Z, but there's things to suggest that it might be starting before Z. What do you mean? Um, well, there's just like things in general that I kind of see, and there was an well, there's image. The, there's the movie was, yeah. that took place after the tournament. Yeah, I guess so, but the movie still ain't. Threat as canon, supposedly. I I don't believe that, but people think that it's which, this thing. Which where, movie is canon that they're saying? I think it's the uh, movie after, like the Piccolo, uh, well, the King Piccolo saga. Yeah, <sighs> the, is the one. Uh, she it's basically uh, one of the Snake Princess. Oh yeah. The oh movie two. Yeah, movie two. Yeah, Jesus. Sleeping Princess in Devil's Castle. Yeah, I, I I don't think any of those movies are canon. People gotta <laughs> exactly. People gotta chill. Like, there's no original um, source, but I mean, I'd like to know about a lot of things because, given that there's also other things that have been uttered in uh, Dragon Ball previously about uh, Tian, um, but we've never known anything to do with Tian really. Only right, thing all we we've know known... is that he just grew up. Training yeah. under um, Sudo Senen. Mm-hmm. 
Well, that's it. And he just wanted to, he aspired to be an assassin like Tao. There's one thing that I really like, though. Android 8 is actually in this um, game. Right, that's, that's kind of cool. It's good. I mean, then again, I hope that, that there's a way that they can do this. They can go into movies, but they could re like make, but like they could remake the concepts for the movies. If you get what I mean, please right. just no Garlic Junior though. <laughs> yeah. Well, I actually didn't mind the uh, Garlic Junior arc. Um, it's, th- not... it's the movie that just confuses me. Right. Well, the thing is with the with the arc is it's really not Garlic Jr. himself. I think he's actually kind of a bad villain. Uh, his concept of school is how he's immortal. I just like how that arc um, intro like it had um, different characters besides Goku really having to they had to handle it themselves. Like Gohan, Piccolo, and Krillin had to really do it all themselves and figure it yeah. out. I mean, yeah, there's I one thing that, that I really cool. want to see in future Dragon Ball, and that is something to do with Pilaf. I hope the Pilaf somehow does become less minor and becomes more part of the actual main story, like as in a villain. As, op- as it... opposed to just being like a gag character? Yeah, yeah. Because it's like, then again, that could even happen with Yamcha. I don't know. Who knows? Right, I mean, anything's possible at this point. You know, Roshi, for him to come back as a fighter when he hadn't fought since his fight with King Piccolo, you know? Mm-hmm. The very so fact really... that... Goku, like, this is this whole fan theory that also got um, gone, where Goku doesn't care about anyone. He literally cried for Roshi. Right, I mean, anybody who thinks that honestly has not really... I, I know people like that all over Twitter. They're all over the place, and they just honestly mm-hmm. haven't... They don't have a true understanding for the series. They don't remember things, and they probably haven't... They probably haven't I mean, given given Japanese us, we've had given us, we've had to watch the series over and over and over and over. Like not like full on due time, but you get what right. I mean. Just little snippets and little clips in order to like make videos. Right. We obviously have to right. look at what they are, look at the context of them, and it just really does hurt when someone just says to you about the video, saying, "Oh well, that's good and all. You did a really good video. It was really good and it was really well explained." But uh, how come you didn't mention this? And it's like Goku being. Um, like not caring about people, and it's right. like, I wish I got comments that nice on my videos. Though I mean, at least people are saying you did a great job on your video. <laughs> on mine, I get this is stupid. Your video sucks. Dislike. I mean, I've had it through. I've had it through Twitter of where someone has decided to actually literally send me something saying, "Oh, your videos are great," and I haven't replied back, and they've just called me a fucking cocksucker. So it's fair enough. Right? Yeah, I get. I get a lot of those. Those are. <laughs> just... It's beautiful. Beautiful, really. Um, I mean, it, it's it's well worth it at the end of the day. I mean, I, I will tell you that. Like, the payoff is massive. Even it, like not in money, obviously, because I'm right. small. But the payoff is massive when you see someone like appreciate your work. If you got my gist. Right. Well, I mean, obviously, I've come across a lot of people who love my content. I mean, I uh, my channel is about to hit twenty five hundred subs, and I've. You know, I've had obviously a lot of positive comments, and I have a lot of friends who enjoy yeah. my content. So you know, it, it's all good stuff. Well, but, the, you know, the negative does kind of get to your head sometimes. Um, yeah, uh, history like tough. creeps up to you too. Like, I'm not meaning like it's in like other people. I'm just meaning history as in general. Right. Uh, it creeps up to you like you know something from years ago will come back up. Because always, right, does. you never know what you did like when. when you were... 15, like, you know, or something yeah. like that can come back on you. Like, to I've never athletes. posted anything bad on Twitter or done anything bad right. on Twitter, really, but I mean, for all they know, like, there could be there could be an image of me eating soup or something and they post it online it's like, oh, well, this was in when I was 15. <laughs> right, I mean, no, but you know, you never know like, what you did or said when you were 15 that... Because you were immature. You right, no you didn't know. And I mean, this happens to athletes, you know, they'll dig through their tweets and find something that they said when they were 15. That was yeah, horrible. well, there was there's things but, like um, with reality shows, there was a person who got kicked off a reality show a few years ago um, for basically a past tweet that they'd said. Right. And it's like they would still do. They, there's people that literally go all the way through and they'll try and ruin your career. Right. So if you have posted that, there's still ways that people can screenshot it because you've got the Wayback Machine too. If they screenshot right, that, you're flipped. And it's tough because some I, I know on mobile, at least, 
Twitter doesn't let you go back and view like your tweets from I think like they cap it off at like every like couple of thousand tweets. But it's always um, it's always screenshotted it's, if yeah, it is an important there. thing. And it's left so on sometimes the you can't, Right, and sometimes you can't even prevent it. You know? Yeah, by not even posting that thing to begin with. Thinking about what you post before you even post it. Right. But sometimes you don't know that when you're young and stupid, <laughs> yeah. you know? That's the issue I mean, some people. I ad- I advise you know? like anyone who is a young content creator or something like that because i'm 18 so that's all i'm right. saying but i'm 18 but uh to be honest with you i didn't get into this pop properly until obviously i'm full on 18 because i'm mature like I, I was gonna do this when i was 15 but then i thought to myself perhaps not not that mature yet so leave it know, a few i'm, years, I'm right. close to 30 at this point and <laughs> I, i'm at this point you know if they're gonna try to cancel me you know uh, as a podcaster, I'm very blatantly my own opinion is my own, and you know yeah, I own my back own with the rage inventions. Of... <laughs> There's no doubt, but you won't get cancelled, honestly, because to be honest with you, um, it's just people in general. They'll be like that. They'll do loose threats right. and they won't go through with it. Look, everybody, and especially if you're a content creator, is going to have to go through somebody that's going to try to cancel them. You know, mm-hmm. it just happens. People want clicks. You know, they, I have dirt on some people that I could reveal, and I would never do it because I don't want the yeah the, the, the clicks. I've, right, you know, I've got the exact same. Like, okay, I I admit it. I'm the Dragon Ball GT fan. Been a fan of the series for years now. Right. Well, that's me, I, and I have to defend myself with that all the time. Yeah, well, There's people that's the same my... with me. Like, people say, oh, well, Super's better than GT, and it's like, no, G- GT's better than Super, to be honest with you. They had really but good I'm ideas. But I'm not even, like, I, I'm not, like, in a, I'm not, like, somebody who thinks that Super is, like, butt cheeks, because I know there's Yeah, that's a lot what I'm saying, that... like, it's really I good. I enjoy it a lot, and especially past the Tournament of Power, I, I enjoyed that a lot. But, but all Dragon a... Ball, all Dragon Ball series have had their flaws. Right. There's some Everything people that has act like flaws. Super is better than than Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. And I'm personally, I defend Dragon Ball a lot because some people think, some people they they believe that um, Z and Super are better than the original Dragon Ball. Like, yeah, but without I, that, then there would be nothing. <laughs> right, There'd but I think else. I think it's actually a better series. Dragon Ball. It really is. It is if, because from it was a writing with, perspective, yeah, it was the fell out. If you are learning martial arts or anything, or even if you want a bit of inspiration, I'll tell you the most inspirational quotes come from the original Dragon Ball. Right. Not and the dra- corny, corny English dub edgy lines where they're <laughs> like, Goku's the, the hope of the universe. That's not really that inspirational to me. Like, you mean as in Z? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm saying some of the, the those cringy lines. But then lines. if you were to go back to original Dragon Ball, um, I mean... The manga's not the best. It doesn't live up with times with certain words that are in the manga. Um, given that there's a lot of stuff that's in that original manga, which is not right. that be- that good. Right. But, I mean... It's this thing of where you've obviously got the whole thing with the dubs. Of where... I think we got Clemis at the time. We had uh, Clemis, we had everyone else. Like I'm talking about basic Ocean Dragon Ball. Right. We had Clemis at the time, or when it was, and I have no, I have no reason to hate on Sean Shemmel, but I personally like Peter Clemis better than Sean Shemmel. There's no reason that you shouldn't be entitled to that opinion, Ex- though. Exactly. You know, people might shit on you of that because that's because they grew, grew up with Sean Shemmel, or they prefer him, whatever it might be. Yeah, um, but with like the thing is, is that we're from a different country to where they probably would be from. Right, no, and I'm Ocean, sure Ocean Group was did the the first sort of. Dub even for over in this over in America, right? They did, yeah, they did voice. Um, like I know Peter Klamis did um the uh, the three original movies, mm. which is very loved amongst a lot of the Dragon Ball fans, especially the hardcores. Um, I mean, but he did an fa- excellent job. Most people, I mean, do personally, think, yeah. according to uh, like according to everyone, um, I-, I know someone who prefers the Malaysian dub for some reason. <laughs> right. Right. I've got no idea I, why, but meanwhile, they, maybe? they grew up with. I can't imagine what the Japanese fans must think about Shemmel. They must be like, this is not 
what the character was intended to be like, you know. I can only imagine. Um, but well, I'm sure they're respectful, and they're like, this is adapted to your language, which uh, that's how I feel about Personally, it. I feel like the closest interpretation to Goku that you will ever get is just through the video games. I know it sounds bad, but the series is good, but through some of the video games, there's been a lot of interpretations of Goku that have been good, bad, not so good, but you know what I mean. Like they're, they've got, they've all got heart put into them. <sighs> you mean like uh, for Shemmel's perspective? Yeah, yeah, from Shemmel's perspective, they've all got heart. What? They've all got so it's all right. put through he, in that general thing. Yeah, I mean, he did honestly. Um, well, sometimes you know the scripts for the video games mm-hmm. are more accurate um, to the tra- Japanese version because they're actually taking direct lines. Yeah, they're not trying to match mouth flaps mm-hmm. or anything. So he's taking the exact same script yeah. that Zawa is reading from. So he's I hate able to how, get his take on it. I hate how Super really gets the um, shove for Autonomous Ultra Instinct. Right. They did it. I mean, there's... The Dragon Ball Super dub is not as good as the Dragon Ball Kai dub, in my opinion. Yeah, it really isn't. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for anyone who thinks that this guy is good. But whoever that singer is for Ultimate Battle, please change him now. Matt oh, Bruce. yeah. Please. So there's rumors that they might change it for the Blu-ray. I want Matt Group. He needs his shine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, there's just quite a few. Um, <laughs> there's just always going to be debates in, in the community. Because yeah, there is. People... I mean, you can't put you can't put like a golden ticket inside of a chocolate bar. Without someone wanting to win it, right? Willy Wonka, right there. But <laughs> if you get what I mean, right. like you can't do that without anyone wanting to win it or get it or have their opinion out. In other words, um, and everyone.